Aloha, welcome to a quick little tech review that I want to put together. I was sent by K&A a couple of their tie-on pickups, basically. These are little pickups encased in a piece of wood that you actually tie under the bridge, under the strings on top of the bridge, so that it's fastened to the ukulele and the piezo pickup can hear the sound or feel the sound from the ukulele accordingly. So it's going to be feeling from the bridge, kind of like the UST that I already have in my more better ukulele here. That is placed under the saddle and the pressure of the strings downward onto that element is what transfers the sound. But I could see this being a nice alternative for folks who don't want to do any kind of permanent altercation to their instrument, don't want to drill any holes, don't want to deal with having the pickup inside their ukulele in the first place. Um, the thing with these is they still have to be attached some way. So they come with a lead that's like eight feet long that plugs into the pickup as it goes onto the bridge. So I have my LR bags, uh, element classical in this ukulele. I was going to attach the K and A here, which is the, just the basic version without the volume knob. As far as I can tell the two that they sent me are the same element, just one has a volume knob and one does not. From there, I was just going to attach it, put it under the strings, see how easy that is. They claim that the installation is really easy and that's one of the perks of the pickup. Try that out and then just record both of them at the same time and I can flip back and forth between the two. You can hear them back to back, just a pretty standard pro grade bags pickup and this little k &A, see how the sound compares. And then probably for fun, I'll just turn on my mic because mics always sound better when you're playing an ukulele, just to showcase how bad pickups of any kind usually sound compared to a mic. Okay, so here we go. Let's try it out. First thing I'm going to need to do is to loosen the strings of the ukulele so that I can pull the knots a little bit loose, loose enough that this guy can stick in there and then do his job. So we'll see how that goes. If I valued my time whatsoever, I would probably get a little string turner, but I'm too old school for that. So the strings are very slack, should be enough to pop the, the knots out. Something that I'll point out is that usually for like a super vintage instrument or something that you're really concerned about not breaking, something that might be structurally questionable, a lot of times you don't want to release the strings all the way to slack. Um, I know this ukulele is pretty pa as far as it goes, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, I've seen Chuck just zap the strings off like it's the end of the world. But in this case, I'm comfortable with it. That's something to keep in mind, though, is I don't think you're never going to get this on unless you loosen all the strings at the same time. So if you have a super vintage ukulele you're worried about, that is a consideration. So you've kind of got to break these knots loose. Honestly, I've never done this before because usually you just rip the entire string off because you're changing strings. I'm not sure what kind of slack it's going to require or if I have enough string on the peg to make it go back on. There's some room. Hey, hey, there's one side, one string down. Two strings down. Three strings down. Assuming that's in the ballpark, um, not too bad. Certainly easier than putting in a normal ukulele pickup, though not super trivial. I think I had to undo the strings a lot more than I expected. But it's in there, and now I'm going to tighten everything back up, and we will get a little comparison thingy going on here.
So I just lost my A string. It actually came undone at the bridge, which isn't a super surprise because I tend to, I cut my strings quite short at the bridge. So they're not buzzing on the top. And so I'm not catching my hands on them. And so adding the little bit of, I don't know, eighth inch of height that this pickup adds stretches the knot out a little bit. And I think that the, the end of the string just slipped through, but that string was shot anyways. I'm going to put a new one on because I need it. It's about to break on the other end anyways, and I will get that up and going and we'll go from there. Okay. So I got the strings pretty much back up to tension without any trouble. One thing that I noticed when I was tightening the strings is that the thickness of this pickup, it lifts the knot away from the bridge a little bit, as you would expect, because there's got to be room for the little piece of wood and the pickup element to slide through the strings. What this th does though, is it lifts the, the little loop of the knot that holds the string as it goes out towards the headstock, wherever that normally sits, it's going to end up sitting, I don't know, a 16th or an eighth of an inch higher than it normally would. And if you have an ukulele with a saddle and a, a um, tie bridge setup that doesn't have a lot of a break angle to work with, you, I could totally see the pickup lifting the knot enough that the string would no longer make super hard contact with the saddle and you could get a little bit of buzzing. So it's going to be a kind of case by case basis sort of use, I guess, as far as if this will work for your ukulele or not. But that's in the ballpark. I'm going to plug everything in and play a little bit and flip back and forth and we can discover together how it sounds because I won't know how it sounds until I listen back and edit the video. So let's plug it in and see how we do. Okay, so I have the bags, classical elements now plugged in. I have the K and A pickup now plugged in and I'm just going to play a little bit and we'll see how it sounds compared to the bags and switch back and forth, give you a little bit of a demo and then I'll give you some final thoughts afterwards. So impressions, first thing that I probably don't need to mention, but that bugs me anyways, is that you do have to retune your ukulele. That is a consideration. It's not going to be something that is so easy that you're going to just do it whenever you feel like it's going to take a, it's going to be a process. It's going to take you a while, you know, maybe half an hour to get the pickup in, get everything super settled back to where it was. And depending on how you cut your strings and tie your strings, you might just not be able to put it on at all with the set you've already got on. It might entail tying it in with a fresh set of strings. 
That said, I imagine that taking it out is easier. You probably don't have to loosen the strings quite as much. And when everything drops down to its original height, I can't see there being any problems with just tightening your strings, taking the slack out and being back to a basically stock ukulele. So one thing that I notice that I usually don't notice and I usually don't care about too much is that this seems to impact the volume and the sound of the ukulele more than I would have guessed. It feels like it still sounds nice. It's still a fabulous ukulele, of course, but from my perspective and what I'm hearing acoustically, not, not in the pickup sense, but acoustically, if I have this on here, it seems like it makes the sound a little bit more distant and a little bit further away, even as I'm sitting here playing it. It's just... Perhaps it's just because it's much quieter and I'm used to it being a certain volume with this ukulele. Not exactly sure what that is about. Um, another thing is that I'm seeing on my meters, on my computer as I'm recording, that it seems like there's kind of a lot of like background noise from the chord. And if you were running around on stage, I imagine you'd want this in your pocket or something so that it didn't have to move so much. But even if you had it suspended and held up in a loop, you know, even just that little tapping looks like it's making quite a bit of noise. We'll have to see in the post as I go to edit the video, I'll try and put some of this noise in there if it's significant enough to hear. That would be a concern. And then of course, this little jack, if you happen to step on the cable or something, it would pop right out and your sound would be gone. So who do I think this is for? I think that, you know, if, if the sound of the pickup is what I expect, I expect it'll be a nice passive piezo sound. I don't imagine it will be bad at all. It's more the application and who it's for, because I'm, I'm a big believer in if you're going to plug your ukulele in, if you're going to be performing, it really does just make sense to have that onboard pickup in your ukulele, ready to rock and roll at any point in time that you might need it. That said, I know there are a lot of folks who maybe play on stage only very occasionally, and they just need something that they can throw on there that maybe is a little bit more, I don't know, cohesive of an idea than one of those like bubblegum stick on pickups. Those are really old school. I think we've probably moved past that point. Um, so this might be a nice compromise. You just loosen the strings up, slide it in and spend half an hour retuning everything and bringing the strings back to their familiar pitch. And then you're ready to go. Um, I definitely don't think this is a substitute depending on the sound, maybe the sound will be fabulous. I'll put some text at the end of the video with some of my thoughts on the sound. But as far as that goes, unless the sound is really super duper fabulous, I don't ever see this replacing a standard pickup or being a professional solution. I really get kind of the impression that this is something that somebody who doesn't have a pickup in their ukulele already is going to use, or maybe they have a nice ukulele that they don't want to drill holes in. And this is gonna be the solution for that, that allows you to fairly easily put a working pickup on the ukulele and just, you know, get, get something going. I'm a little bit concerned with how the jack and the edge of the pickup device kind of stick out over the edge of the bridge depending on the bridge design, of course, this might be supported. Uh, but on this ukulele, since the bridge kind of dives off to the side, once we get past the string tie area, that edge is a little bit unsupported. And if you like, I don't know, leaned over a counter or something and smashed that in, I could see that breaking off kind of easily. Um, but again, it's not meant to be that super permanent road worthy, gig worthy device. It's a little bit more of a, hey, I wanna plug in my ukulele today. I don't have a pickup. How can I do that? Here you go. Um, so, interesting thing. KNA did send these to me. I'm not being paid to say any of this stuff, um, but they did send me this stuff to try out. And these are my just kind of fresh 
unbiased opinions because I don't really care either way. This is not something I would ever use just because I already have pickups in my ukulele because I need them to do a very specific thing. So I'm just trying to give you um, my thoughts on this as somebody who's seen folks who like, I don't have a pickup, what do I do? This might be a possible solution. With that all said, I've got my Neumann right here. It's not even in a very good position, but I'm gonna play a little bit and just turn on the mic sound and you can hear how a mic is even in a bad position is always gonna sound more lifelike. It's always going to sound more accurate than any pickup you can pretty much use. in a bind and your ukulele doesn't have a pickup most gig opportunities where you might be wanting to go up on stage like an open mic most of the time they're going to have an extra mic and an extra stand and they'll be able to put a microphone on your ukulele and amplify you that way as long as you don't move around too much it's going to capture a sound and even the most crappy mic is going to probably sound better than most of the best pickups it's just the way of the world how it works we do what we can with the pickups because of their convenience and their ability to do certain things very well, but it's not a perfect situation. Um, however, KNA, I'll put a link in the description if you want to check out what they're about, look around their website, see what they offer. Like I said, there's also an option with a volume knob so you can turn yourself up and down. Hi, it's Brad from the future. I just got done editing the bulk of the video I had from before. Just wanted to share a couple of quick thoughts as opposed to just throwing some text on the screen. Obviously the mic sounds the best to me. This is all just personal preference, but to me the mic sounds the clearest. It sounds the most alive because it captures the room and everything that's happening. But with that said, um, k and A, I thought it was a little crunchy sounding, which could be, I guess, the attachment style and that there might be room for vibrations to creep into the sound and kind of create that er, er, sort of thing. Um, that's a possibility, but it could just be that the pickup is a little bit overloaded and it doesn't have a lot of headroom. Compared to the bags, I thought it was a little bit more warm sounding and a little bit more nasally in a certain spot and the bags is a little bit clearer, but at the same time, a little bit more plasticky. Um, it all really just does come down to personal preference. It depends what you're trying to do with the pickup, what kind of sound you're trying to achieve. And something that I didn't say before is that I imagine this pickup and the style that it picks up with is probably going to capture more of the overall sound of the instrument because of how it's being attached to the bridge where it's picking up the overall vibrations as opposed to a UST style pickup, which is going to actually live under the saddle and hear the direct vibration of the strings. And so I would consider this K and A to be a little bit more of a soundboard transducer style pickup as opposed to the UST, but to each their own. Hopefully that was informative and useful and I will catch you in the next video. Aloha.